Live from the San Jose McHenry Convention Center, it's The Cube at Open Compute Project U.S. Summit 2015. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Silicon Valley for theCUBE, special presentation of the Open Compute Project Summit 2015. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Jeff Frick. We're here at theCUBE to extract the scene from the noise. Our next guest is Kush, Kushigra Bad, GM, Server Engineering, Microsoft Cloud and Enterprise. Welcome to theCUBE. Well, so you, Microsoft you. is now pumping on all cylinders, the new CEO, who we, we've interviewed in the Cube, actually I stepped away and well, Jeff I Kelly know. did the interview, <laughs> had to take a bio break and I didn't know he was going to be promoted to CEO, I would have, <laughs> would have definitely interviewed Satya a little bit better. Um, but you guys are really amazing right now. You guys last year here at Open Compute right. essentially laid down and open source a lot of the key jewels right. of Microsoft Cloud, right. with Azure and all the technology and the right. people out in the world might not know that you guys have a massive infrastructure, MSN search, full infrastructure for right. all your products, full on cloud, et cetera, et cetera. So, so take us through, what's going on with Microsoft's current cloud offering, and what did you guys do this year to build on that kind of donation or investment or open source, right. whatever we want to call it, the goodies. Right. So, so last year, around this time of year, we joined OCP, and uh, essentially all the hardware we designed for our internal applications, like Azure, Bing, Xbox, Office, we took all that hardware and we contributed everything to OCP. Everything? Everything, yeah, so it's the same. So the belief is that uh, we want to accelerate the adoption of cloud computing, and we, and we believe we can do that if there is consistency between what we use in the public cloud and the, you know, what is being used in enterprise. So to have that consistent platform between the two environments is uh, kind of our goal, yeah. which will help to people to move to cloud computing faster. So with that spirit, we contributed all the hardware specifications to OCP last year. Let's drill into that for a second, because I, you know, a lot of people talk about this in, 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 in other environments, like, yeah, the project's not working out, so I'm just going to donate it and open source and hope something happens. That wasn't the case with Microsoft. I mean, that, and I, it's a generalization, I know it's a generalization. You know, it's not working out, just open source it and see what happens, give it a good college try, startup didn't get enough cash. But you guys didn't, wasn't your, that wasn't what was happening with you guys. You actually had some real IP. Right. What was the core things that you guys brought to the table, and what was its impact this year? Yeah, the, big, the big thing is uh, we operate a global uh, set of services across you know, like 70, 70 countries or so. There's about a million servers in production. It's across uh, you know, tens of data centers. So what we learned from operating these global data centers, the experiences we have, or how to operate at scale, that is captured in the hardware design and that's what we contributed. So the idea is that uh, we take these hardware designs and we make it open so th everybody else can benefit from the experiences that we have had. So what learnings that were magnified from this? Because obviously you're bringing some serious goodies to the table. Right. So people who are tinkering and, and moving from tinkering to actual development and prototyping, right. even the little baby we saw today from like say HP and Fox, uh, Foxconn, those guys have a little, it's not elegant, but it's first generation. Right, right. They got to get up and running. They're not at scale. So it's like in the old programming days, local host, push it to the cloud. Right, right, right. Now design, a prototype to large scale. So what was the learnings you guys did on the large scale side that's right. now built into the, into the ecosystem? It's, uh, it's about how do you manage the servers, how do you operate the servers, uh, how do you deal with failures when they happen, how do, how do you have software and hardware interoperate with each other at cloud scale, so all those learnings are only when you get to run a public cloud yourself. So those were the, those were the things that we have baked into our specification and we don, uh, donated that to OCP. Now this year, what we're doing is continuing the contributions. So there's, uh, there's quite a few new technologies that we developed over the past year and uh, we are now contributing that to OCP as well. So it's basically in the, in the same theme of, you know, whatever we are driving as innovation in Microsoft's cloud for the hardware, we want to bring it to OCP, make sure it's available to everybody else. So this year there's a couple of big contributions we are making. The first one is what we call uh, local energy storage, or LES. And uh, the big contribution there is it's a different, radically new way to design data center power backup systems. 
you know, so in the classic model, you have a big battery room with, you know, car, you, you know, like the lead acid batteries you have in cars. Think about a whole room full of those. And that's what happens when the power goes out. The batteries pick up the load and you make sure that you know, your servers keep running. Of course, it costs a lot to have a broom that big and to operate it, maintain it, service it. So what we've done is we got rid of that whole thing. And we moved the batteries inside the server. So the power supply that the server has, has the batteries built in. So, so this is a completely radical way to do data center design. Uh, we estimated it will save 25% of the footprint of the facility? 25%. 25%, so yes. Big number. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Density's>, <laughs> that's, uh, that's an issue. Density's a problem for 20, many customers. 25%. Yeah, and uh, for efficiency of uh, power delivery should get better by 15%. And then, uh, the, the, here's a big one. The cost benefits are 5x better than traditional designs. So if you're a... If you're a Mainly center, driven by the power. Yeah so, yeah, so the amount of money you invested in building a traditional data center uh, and the, the amount of money that goes into the traditional power backup, you can cut that by 5x by going to this new design. Wow. So it's, uh, and we are deploying this in volume at Microsoft. So there's some benefits to getting up and running, so obviously those are obvious benefits, but this other yeah. intangible one, which is foreclosing growth if you make a design decision. I mean, let's, let's unpack that a little bit, because we've heard this from, right. from entrepreneurs and also developers. They don't have the resources, so they have to make medieval decisions right. around some design stuff. They might not have the capability. Right. So right. in addition to the downstream benefits, what are some of those things that those developers are facing that you guys saw architecturally that you guys say, hey, you don't have to worry about these architectural decisions? Right, so, so we essentially, if you think about the, the hardware specifications, we are contributed as sort of an API. Like if you make an analogy to software, you know, there is a software APIs and then you can, you can build on top of that and focus on your application work. It's the same thing with hardware. You, know, you have a set of specifications, you just pick those up and then you focus on adding the value where it makes a difference to your environment. So that way you don't have to go reinvent the wheel, you know, start doing all the designs all over again. And that's I think where OCP makes a big difference because you don't have to worry about redesigning hardware because the big guys have done it, Facebook, Microsoft, they've contributed the specifications. You can just take that and you know, run with it and then go make changes specific to your data center environments. So are you getting the benefits back as the classic open, one of the main reasons to open source, right, is to put the innovation right. out to a broader community so you get, you get innovation benefits back. Right, are right. you guys getting innovation benefits back or is it pretty much you're a big, you're a big guy, you've done huge scale, so it's really more kind of a downward Yeah, it goes push. both ways. Uh, uh, we have seen a lot of cases where the contributions we made People have taken that, they've enhanced it, made some modifications, and they've contributed it back into OCP. Well, for the majority part, at this point, it's uh, the contributions Microsoft's making. Okay. But we're seeing momentum around an ecosystem that's building. Uh, so one one yeah. thing we announced uh, one thing this time is uh, we have uh, a Canonical who has become a Microsoft partner, and they built on top of the specifications we contributed. So now you can have a Linux distribution, and you can have a third party, a neutral way to provision servers. So that's a good example of how people have taken the specifications and built on top of that. Right. And I wonder if you could talk about the business discussion around open sourcing, which some would probably consider part of your competitive advantage around running the Microsoft Cloud, the Azure Cloud. Right. Take us to that kind of conversation as to why you would open source a big chunk of what was clearly a competitive advantage, as opposed to Facebook, where it really wasn't their core business. It was just, right. it was kind of an execution detail. So, uh, so our view is that our competitive advantage is really in the services that we offer. So if you think about Bing, about Azure, about Office, those are the services. That's where our competitive advantage is. Uh, how we run the infrastructure is, uh, you know, is a is an area where we would like to share that with others, so that we can drive uh, a common platform between, you know, public cloud, private cloud, enterprise. Okay. So yeah, it's a different view of uh, how we view the competitive advantage versus what is common. Yeah, interesting. So as a GM now, you, you've been a tech athlete, as we say, working at Intel. <laughs> Intel just doesn't hire guys who you know, aren't strong technically. Right. Obviously, processor, CPU designs. Getting stuff in silicon is a big deal. Right. That's a big trend right now. Right. So you guys are donating a lot of the open source stuff. That's a great best practice. In a way, you kill on the market with kindness. It's really good, right? right. So now the next wave, is in processor, system on chip stuff, Intel's talking about this, Facebook's right, talking about it. Right. 
Software native on silicon is going to be huge. Mm -hmm. What are you guys doing with that? How are you seeing that you're a software company, but you also have hardware expertise, so it's interesting. So right. can you share your perspective as a GM, investment strategies, how you're looking at the market, right. what you're looking at, big picture, you don't have to be specific on the numbers, I know you're right. a public company, but mindset wise. Yeah, so uh, companies like Intel, they're doing a fantastic job at the silicon aspects, uh, but I think the key thing is how do you take that silicon innovation that Intel and others are driving, and how do you integrate that into a bigger environment, like cloud scale environment. So when it comes to you know, how do you um, do the systems management, how do you use power features, how do you uh, take advantage of uh, instruction set extensions, you know, how do you offer new services based on silicon features, that's where kind of we go and uh, start adding you know, customization around the silicon that exists. So it helps to bring new features to market faster by working with uh, folks like Intel and then that ends up in the open source community. But now the business model's shifting now, so you know, I love the, I, I always love the conversation race to zero. Right. Because it doesn't really mean anything. In a way, you can argue, race to zero, commoditization, value right. will shift. Exactly. So value's yeah. shifting. So value's shifting all over the stack, right? So up and right. down, SDN, a lot of network action going on. Right. And also at the top right. of the stack. How are you guys going to look at playing in that and what are you enabling and what is your ecosystem focused in on? Yes, yeah, so the, the value addition that we have is essentially in the services stack. So, so the way I think about it is uh, there is something that we need to do in hardware that will eventually result in a differentiated offering at the service level. It should, it should end up making Azure better or it should end up making Office better. It should either do that or it should reduce the cost equation. Yeah. You know, maybe we spend, if we spend a dollar doing something today, then we should spend 50 cents doing it tomorrow. So the question then becomes, uh, what we, can we do in those aspects to drive innovation at the hardware level? So, and like I said, you know, the, the hardware pieces are, uh, or we are open sourcing that because that's what we want to drive commonality for. We were talking at um, the big data SV event we had here in right. Companion with Hadoop World about you know, in-memory analytics, of course it's flash, right. which is not technically memory, it's you know, right. flash right. memory, the persistent, but then you got memory, DRAM, right. then you got now in-processor. Right. So analytics are moving from, right. in, I guess, tape, to spinning rust and right. disk, right. to flash, to, to in-memory, to in-processor. Right. So now you're going to have speed, then you got virtualization on top of that. Right. So the next question comes, okay, are we truly now living in an SOA world service-oriented architecture where the dream 10 years ago of SOA is actually playing out? It's, uh, it's uh, in, the, in the sense of uh, a web services model, it is playing out. I mean, that's what you know, offerings like Azure are. You, you have a service that's available to customers. It's behind a web API. Uh, you know, machine learning is a good example, right? Yeah. It used to take such a huge amount of effort to do statistical analysis and you know, find patterns in data and, and yeah. make predictions on top. In Azure, we offered a machine learning service uh, in Brent GA a couple of weeks yeah. back. And now you can, you know, if you're a credit card company, you can upload all your credit card records, you can feed in some patterns, and you can detect fraud right away, just like that. All through a simple web API. So it's, yeah, the world is changing. And the convergence, you talk about system of record, systems of engagement, and then now right. making, getting insights out of it. Right. So the speeds are critical. I mean, right. you got to have the performance. Right. You couldn't do the machine learning and that extent right. stuff 15 years ago. No, you, you didn't have Flash, right. you had DRAM, right. and now you have amazing amount of resource now. Right. Right. So how has that changed the game? Certainly a lot, but from a GM, you got all this innovation going around right. here. Right. How do you prioritize, where's the key enabler for you right now? I think it's about uh, driving R&D. Uh, you know, uh, in a classic model, the challenge always was that you had what you had, and yeah. you had to figure out how to use that. Now the model has shifted to, you want to keep offering new and new services, new models, and then you look at that and then you think about what does hardware need to look like? Okay, I have what I have today, but what should it look like three years out, five years out? And then you start thinking about what innovations you want to drive, whether it's in silicon, whether it's in systems, whether it's in power. Yeah. And that's the big thing happening in the cloud space is that it's completely reinventing how hardware should be designed. So that, that, and that's where- I almost hate the word replatforming, but in a way there's some replatforming going on. Replatforming of the hardware ecosystem. Yeah, and exactly now right. you were here at OCP, it's really amazing to see the collision course of hardware and software right, right, right. and open source coming together. All coming together, yeah. The open source was more of a hacker homebrew kind of mentality, tinkering, right. pretty geeky firmware, programming, 
Right. Now you have, in a scene, kind of a software development model. Right. Life cycle, DevOps, Agile. Right, and it's, uh, it's getting tremendous uh, adoption from the industry. Uh, so, you know, in the, in the switch ecosystem, for example, OCP has done a fantastic job at uh, you know, breaking, breaking up the different monolithic layers in the switch, and now you have you know, companies uh, on the show floor here who are demonstrating uh, you know, different solutions for how to disaggregate the switch. So it, the whole ecosystem is completely changing, and that gives you the ability to do yeah. agile innovation and drive uh, features where it's needed. So we always love to ask this question on theCUBE. We'll ask this couple more I want to get to, because it's great to have you on theCUBE, by the way. Right. Great, because you have a good visibility on a lot of legacy and or cutting edge stuff. Um, is the future, right? So you have a future generation of developers out there, right. okay? You have an old school developers my age, I'll be 50 this year, I've lived through the, the generation of, you know, early days right. of, you know, I guess software, right. computer software. Whatever generation of open source we're in now is changing, so I got to ask you, what is, the, what is the key open source computer science skill set that's really needed from a young gun and or old school? Is it systems and is it compiler? And what kind of degrees in computer science that's cutting edge out there? And don't say machine learning, because that's kind of been overused. Machine learning is, right, is right. standard in my mind right now. Machine learning is kind of out there, cutting edge. Right. But like, what is, what is really going on? Is it compiler design? Is it virtualization? Right. You know, virtual compilers? Is the science and the hardware? What are you, can you share yeah. your opinion of the landscape of the folks who are thinking yeah. about careers and developing? I think it's, it's, that's a great question. You know, when, when I was graduating, the, the point used to be about what new things can you innovate from the ground up? And now the, sh the conversation has shifted to, there's a, lot of amount, there's a lot of work already done by the open source community, whether it's hardware or software, and the conversation now is what can I reuse so that I can build value on top of that by assembling you know, the bo blocks that are already out there. So that requires a whole different skill set. It requires more of an integration skill set and a solution-based you know, skill set versus let me go write a new compiler. Well, there's a ton of compilers out there. You know, let me go write a new database. Well, there's a ton of databases out there. So the question then becomes... We used to build our own graphics libraries from scratch right. with pixels on the screen. Remember back in the 80s? Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the, the GUI was a homegrown. Right. So the innovation I see... <laughs> so in the Valley, in Silicon Valley, the innovation I see happening is, you know, the really good developers are saying, yeah. well, I, I have a good understanding of everything that's out there that people have worked on. I just need to figure out a way to stitch them together in a unique and or different way, right? It's kind of like, you know, it's, it's like going to a restaurant. You want the fast food, the In-N-Out burger, right. you want the fast, you know, <laughs> breakfast meal, or you want the fine dining experience. Right, right. It's an architectural, it's a Lego block design. It's a Lego block approach. Yeah, it's exactly really right. cooked a meal. The right, outcome right. is the outcome, right? So, yeah. tool for the different yeah. job. And the faster we can do it, the, the faster we can get you a solution to market, that's what differentiates you. Well, security, final question. Security, updates, uh, thoughts, Security, uh, well, it's it's uh, it's Besides an ongoing, being sucky right now, <laughs> it's, it's, it's an ongoing challenge. You yeah. know, it's always this one step, two step thing. Yeah. So whatever the good guys do, the bad guys catch up, and then the good guys do it again, and the bad guys. Well, you're catch open up. sourcing things, so the notion is if you got more eyes on it. Right. Um, but you also now eliminate perimeters. Right. 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 So there's no more perimeter-based right. security. So it's yeah, it's all open, so people can review the code and they can sign on it. So that helps. All right. Final prediction. This community here. It's very small still, but still successful. Right. And thanks to you guys and others, what's going? What's next for this this growth? What's what has to happen next? What's the evolution of the ecosystem? Uh, what's think, the I what's the sunlight on this organic soil here? I think it, uh, so. We're already seeing signs where uh, the industry is getting disrupted, and the rest of the industry is adapting to it. You know, uh, HP announcing the uh, this morning about their new product Cloudline. Uh, that was a that was a very interesting announcement that helps to bring HP you know, in more in line with where the industry is going. I expect to see more of, along those lines. In the networking space, in the server space, in the storage space, uh, so basically OCP will become the driver for disrupting the industry and uh, making it more uh, you know, in line with uh, open systems that can be composable. Disaggregation is not a bad thing. Disaggregation, yeah. Open source. Dead down yeah. the this is the cube. We're out in the open. We are on the trenches, out on the edge of the network. <laughs> Low latency data here from Microsoft, extracting the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick. We'll be right back with our next guest, live here in Silicon Valley at Open Compute Project Summit 2015. We'll be right back. All right, thank you, John. Thanks, Ashavi. Thanks.